Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek from thelandgeek.com. And I'm on with the king of marketing, your favorite marketer, my favorite marketer, Jim Lewis. Jim, <laughs> hey, how's everything going? What's happening, Mark? I'm going, doing really great. So in case you guys don't remember, Jim has been uh, creating multiple large sales organizations worldwide for the past 20 years. He's sold over $10 million of product and uh, has the most enviable lifestyle besides maybe Duran that I know. Jim, you're sitting in Dana Point, probably in your boxers right now, uh, getting ready to, to go on a hike or something, right? What do you, what yeah, are you yeah. doing? Yeah, I, I do all kinds of crazy things. Bike, uh, bike ride. I'll go down to the beach like Duran does and, and hit the waves. I'm, I'm not too far off, just above the fog here. <laughs> right, but. right. So Jim is going to tell us exactly how he's created this enviable lifestyle because I want to I wanna take it from him. So uh, I think... We talked uh, in a past podcast about making our Craigslist program, and we actually did, uh, craigslistmastery.com. So, Jim, you want to just tell everybody what, what, we, what we created? Wow. I, I will tell you it's a big wow. Uh, we, you and I you know, literally were on the phone an entire day, um, and we recorded just tons and tons of content um, I, you know, I sat down, I literally just poured out everything and every little trick, every little nuance, uh, to Craigslist marketing and as it relates specifically to land and real estate, but it can be used with anything really. And the whole premise of the program is to get yourself noticed in a professional way to stand out and to get your phone to ring. And that's always been my goal. So you know, anybody can post on Craigslist. That's not that hard to do. Uh, but it's you, t you will fall into the, the giant ocean with everybody else. So the key is to how to differentiate yourself, how to get plucked out of there through searches. And uh, I mean, Mark, we went through so much detail uh, as it relates to that. We, we drilled down to some of the nuances and things in an ad that you don't even see. You know, it's it's hidden behind the curtain. Yeah, I mean it's it's over two Excuse hours. Me. It's tw we've separated it out into twelve videos. Right. The production quality is great, and uh, if you're in, I, I if you're one of my students, you're definitely marketing on Craigslist because I, I talk about it all the time. But even if you're not, you should be marketing on Craigslist. And even if you just are selling stuff out of your garage, I mean, Jim went on. What was, what was that vacation you went on, just selling junk on your, out of your garage? Yeah, that's how I kind of fell into this, is my, my neighbor was selling stuff on Craigslist out of his garage, and I'm like, how is he doing that? And, and he just sort of showed it to me. So uh, my, my garage, you know, I, I'm a full-time stay-at-home dad. I work marketing from my spare bedroom, and so with that comes a lot of extra time, and, and I like to get out and, and exercise, and I'm a track athlete and Ironman and all that fun stuff. And so my garage literally looks like a dick sporting goods all the time. And I just got sort of sick of a bunch of stuff and I decided to start listing it on Craigslist and put it out there. And I, people were coming to the house. My wife was real nervous, never a bad experience, not even once, but I sold stuff like crazy. And, um, and I put all the money aside. I didn't spend a dime of it, put it all aside. And then that next summer, I took my entire family. We used some air miles and Craigslist money, and we went to the Grand Cayman Islands and stayed at the Ritz Carlton for a week. And <laughs> that is not a cheap trip to take. <laughs> right, right. It's really expensive, uh, food wise, especially, but it was so much fun and so gratifying to know that that's how I paid for it. And, um, you know, we've come a long way since then, honestly. In, in how we write the ads and, and how we differentiate. I've studied it to no end to know what is the best thing to do. Uh, just the little nuances. And, and I'll tell you this, you know, part of the course is, is we literally show my screen as I build an ad. And oh, you get yeah. to watch how I do it step by step, click by click. 
And, uh, you know, short of you sitting here with me at my, at my home office, uh, that's, that's pretty darn good. So, yeah. And we also have the audio of that as well. And I'll tell you why, because I'm an idiot. I, uh, I'm using this program called call recorder that records both video and audio. Well, because I'm so used to just podcasting with it, I just thought, oh, I'll, I'll just do audio only. So the first time we did this, for two hours, Jim did the program, <laughs> and it was only audio. And uh, that just goes to show you what a patient, generous human being he is, that he actually did it again with me and didn't, uh, didn't scream and yell. You're, you're really, you were really good about it. I don't know, you know what I, I did is I, 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 we stopped. And I grabbed my mountain bike and I went for a ride and I climbed this giant hillside here that we lived near the, the coastline. And I took a picture or was it a video or something? Yeah, yeah, it was a video. <laughs> and I'm like, don't worry about it. It's OK. I got my mind cleared. We're coming back. We're going to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and I came back and we did it again. And it's even better. But um, you get both versions and one you can yeah listen to in the car. I, I absorb a lot of material in the car. I listen to it. Uh, for me, it's sometimes hard to sit in front of a computer for hours on end uh, watching something. Uh, but if I'm driving, man, you got my attention and I can listen. So you'll yeah. get those. Yeah. And so what, what's like the biggest problem that you see people doing on Craigslist as far as marketing? You know, um, uh, just terrible ad copy, uh -huh. just boring ad copy and the lack of pictures. As simple as that sounds. And I'm not talking about the little thumbnail pictures. Well, I, I guess I am. Some a lot of ads don't even use the little thumbnail pictures that they yeah. give you access to. But but there's ways to embed in the ad itself beautiful high definition, full screen, beautiful pictures. And if you've got uh, a piece of property, I've got a property up in Utah that we're selling um, called the Hideout, and we went up and took beautiful landscape looking pictures. It, it's land. It's just raw land. And there's a few pieces that have uh, some cabins on it. And I put these up that are just wall to wall on your computer when you look at my ad. And then you go to the other ads. And here's the problem. They all just have a few lines of text, you know, 40 acres, 10,000, you know, drill for your own well. Here's a number, you know, whatever. Just, right, right. And then you go to my ad and it obviously took more time to build once you build it, you can take it and, and place that ad over and over and over every place you can all the time. And I show you exactly how to do that. I show you how not to get into trouble with Craigslist for, for posting. And, um, you know, just be the most professional top of your game person on the, on the listing area for your, your product or service. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a must have. And, and we're pricing it right. I mean, it's not going to break you. So uh, it's 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 gonna be a must-have product. I think we're giving it away, but that's <laughs> yeah, opinion. yeah, exactly. For as much time as we put into it, yeah, uh, it'll be a no-brainer. And right. we're gonna offer support. You know, one of the things that I get asked a lot is to look at ads after they've been created, um, to help tweak them, adjust them, and so we're we're probably gonna have some sort of a support mechanism uh, uh, group where we maybe get together uh, you know, a couple of times a month and interact and, and we get to look and critique and work on ads together. And uh, that's going to be really, really helpful to get that feedback from another person who happens to know, you know what the heck we're doing. So um, that's something that you can look forward to as well. Right, right. So, all right, I think we plugged craigslistmastery.com enough. I already know what my tip of the week is going to be, but – Let's talk about making money and finding your target niche. And why not use the third largest country in the world if it were a country? Mm. Facebook. Jim, why are we all marketing on Facebook? Well, hey, there's another ginormous opportunity um, that's wide open to us. You know, Facebook is a fairly new animal. Uh, it's, it's not necessarily looked at by the business community yet as a real viable tool but i will tell you that is a huge huge mistake and that is changing rapidly right now and so um you know people go to facebook to interact and to socialize 
with their friends and their their colleagues and and relatives and post pictures of the family that sort of thing they don't want to be marketed to so it's a different venue you have to play by a little bit different rules and if you if you go on facebook here's the thing with a billion people on there i can promise you your prospects are on facebook right okay? they're, they're definitely on facebook sell. they are but how do you find them and that's the good question how do you find them so if you go to your facebook wall you'll notice if you haven't there's little ads that show up on the right hand side and those ads are very specifically targeted to you for your user experience based on all the things that you've liked before, that you've commented on before. Uh, it's, it's almost a little spooky how much information intelligence they gather on us. It's just, you know, one of those things on Facebook. And for example, if, if you click on and like a few times uh, various cooking sites or um, a recipe site or things like that and, and on Facebook and, and you've, uh, you know, maybe you've joined a cooking group on Facebook that talks about cooking, for example, you're going to start to notice on the right hand side of your, of your screen, advertising targeted to people who like to cook. Right. Right. Okay. So based on what it is you're selling, Mark, in your case, you sell land, you sell real estate. So you want to go target people who are interested in real estate. Well, do you just suppose out of a billion people, there might be a few people on there who like to invest in real estate? Yeah. I mean, I, I want, you know, my target group is typically they're over 40 mm -hmm. and they are male, you know, male dominated typically. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what if I just want to go after people that wanted rural land? So who wants rural land? Uh, the military seems to like mil uh, rural land a lot. They kind of like the idea of getting away from it all and the place to kind of uh, de-stress. Uh, the prepper movement is huge. Mm -hmm. How do I find preppers on Facebook, Jim? So when you go to build an ad, now we're, we're getting uh, maybe, I don't want to get, I'm not going to get technical, but. Right. Let's jump into but, it. Let's but is it you, possible to do that? Yeah, absolutely. There are groups that are that are niched to to that movement. There are groups that are niched to whatever it is you're looking for. You would be so surprised at the at the niche markets that are represented, and that you can grab that membership, if you will, the people that are in that group, and advertise to just them on their wall. I can advertise just to them on their wall in that group. Yeah, yeah. You could so, you could go. Okay. You know, I'll give you an example to an extreme. So I have a local deli, right, here in Dana Point. Great food, by the way. Okay, so they just opened up last year. Didn't know it. They put up a Facebook ad that said, "Hey, new deli in Dana Point," and they showed this beautiful Reuben sandwich, right? <laughs> right. And and a little bit of ad copy. I don't remember what it was. And, um, you know, now open, come see us, that type of thing. So I'm like, wow, okay. And now it showed up on my wall. I'll bet it didn't show up on your wall. No, it definitely didn't show up on my wall. Okay. And it showed up a few times and then a few more times. I finally clicked on the thing, figured out where they're located, and I've now become one of their best customers. Okay, so when you clicked on it, where did it take you? I mean, you don't ever leave those that Facebook garden, do you? You do. You, you do leave the Facebook garden. Okay. You could, yeah. So in that case, I believe I just went to his website, which was a very simple little website that sort of showed the menu and the location and, you know, his smiling face, great guy, very personable. And I saw it. I'm like, cool. I like it. And now I know where they're located. Next time I need a sandwich, I'm going to go there. And I probably, I think I went that week. But here's how he found me. When you go in and you create an ad. Right. And maybe we'll do a, a tutorial on this, Mark. But when you go in and create an ad, you can you can target people who live in a certain zip code. Really? So he did that. He targeted people that live in this town, maybe in this age category. Maybe he put in there some other search parameters of people who you know love roast beef sandwiches. I don't know. <laughs> right, right. Uh, maybe not. Maybe he just wanted to let the community of Dana Point, no, it's probably a small enough but large enough community that uh, that would be a good target market. And 99.9% um, 
100% I'm confident that's exactly what he did. And uh, I know it has brought him business. I've talked to him about it because I was just very pleased to see that work on a local, very local, organic, small business uh, platform. And, um, and it, you know, and so you can take it and make it work for any, any business, really, by right. getting really niche specific about who your target is. Right, right. And I think we talked about this before, that you were working with a company that sold silver. And you were mm -hmm. doing consulting for them. And I was saying, you know, people that buy these commodities also buy raw land. So could I find people that invest in silver and gold and most likely would invest in raw land? I could drill down in Facebook and yeah. find those groups and market to them. So that's a, that's a great thinking out of the box uh, group of people who would be interested in your product. Um, instead of just hitting just real estate people or, um, you know, you're thinking out of the box preppers. You're thinking of silver investors. You're thinking uh, people in those different categories. And and absolutely, right. you can you can find groups. One of the biggest groups I found was a silver group that actually purchased from another company <laughs> <laughs> and they had a giant following, huge following. And so I targeted those people and I just, we just raked it up. I mean, it was so good. Right. And your, your Facebook ads converted at what, what level was it? It was like, it was crazy, right? The average Facebook ad gets like a 0 0.02 click rate. Is that right? Or something yeah. crazy, mm -hmm. something crazy right. low. Yeah, well, and, and in this case, I was dry. There's two things you can do with a Facebook ad. You can keep them internally within Facebook and maybe have them click the ad to go to a fan page. Uh, I hope I'm not speaking too large here for people in terms of not understanding, but it's it's like a fan page. In this case, it was a fan page for silver. Okay. okay. For people who love silver and investing in coins and things like that, it's just a fan page. And people would go there, I'm a big fan of silver, and they'd click like. And okay. I had a huge click-through rate and compliance rate of adding people to that fan page. Then every time I put up a post well, in wait, that wait, wait, Jim, let me interrupt you. What is the value of like? What, why, why does that matter? Well, it it forever ties them to you. Okay, but does does it that like go on their wall so all their friends see? I like this yes, absolutely. Company? So that goes into their feed that says you know this is an act an action step that they took and their oh, okay. friends go oh that's huge. Mark just like silver light you know silver and uh, hmm, interesting I I like silver too and so I got a lot of residual likes from the friends of the friends. <laughs> okay, so that's that's really where the value of Facebook is. It can be. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, you know, we, we built a following based on ads targeted to our target group. They went, they stayed internal within Facebook and built a giant fan page. And then every time I put something in the, in the box or in, you know, in the, um, whether it was a photograph or a promotion, which I only did about one out of five posts, uh, something specific promotion. Otherwise, I was giving value and giving information about silver and investing in coins, that sort of thing. Um, it would show up on their wall. It would be a constant reminder to them about this page. Okay. From there, they could link over to our company website and and jump in even further. And that's that was when the real magic started to happen. So that's keeping people in Facebook. In the case of the deli, he took us outside of Facebook to an external website, and uh, and there's value both ways. Just depends on what your goal is, what you want to do. You can do both ways. So for for our business, which is buying and selling raw land, would you recommend we promote our Facebook page, like FrontierPropertiesUSA.com, or should I actually take them outside of Facebook and promote? my listings or do both what do you what would you recommend yeah i would do both you actually would. i okay. there's value in doing both is um, it but is it expensive well it it it's relatively inexpensive uh you can set your budget for five bucks a day okay and, and that and you recommend doing that as a test yeah absolutely okay. so when, when you get to when you get to it and you're actually building your ad 
you know, you can you can set your daily limit to five, ten bucks a day, twenty bucks a day, just to test out things. Now, uh, this is where it gets tricky. Is you wanna you wanna be testing. See, when you go to your Facebook page, you look at your wall and you see the ads. Uh, this is the order in which uh, is it uh, importance and how people evaluate that ad. They look at the picture first. Right. The picture gets their attention. Secondly, is the headline. That starts to draw them in, and it it invites them to read the rest of the ad, which is the body. And we're, there's not a lot of characters, you know, words you can use here. It's it's tight. You got to keep it tight. Um, from there, if 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 you've piqued their curiosity enough to click, then um, you've got to have a page or where you're sending them to be congruent with that ad. Okay. Right. Uh, in other words, you can't have, you know, a stack of money and, and, you know, some wording about, you know, get rich overnight, whatever. And then you bounce them to a page and try to sell them a, uh, an insurance policy. Right. Right. <laughs> It'll okay. just piss them off. Right. You don't sure. want to do that. Um, we had really good luck, just a very vanilla ad all about promoting the, the love of this commodity called silver. You could do the same thing. Yeah. And yeah. Get I mean, them over to your page. And now you've captured them in, in essence uh, for every little post you put up. Yeah. I think we should run a Facebook ad and come back and tell everybody how it went and, and just see. Totally. You know, and, and hit these silver people. Um, I'd just be curious. And, that'd you know, be a fun niche. That would be a definitely be fun. a fun niche. Yeah. So, Jim, are you personally, you know, working Facebook a lot, Twitter? I mean, are you on social media, Google Plus? I think, you know, Duran was talking about how important Google Plus is now. Yeah, that's kind of my next frontier is to really understand that more. Um, I do a little, little bit of Twitter. Um, haven't, haven't really gone down there. I've really tried to master some of the other platforms first. Right. Um, Right. Facebook, uh, yes, I am very, very um, much involved in Facebook advertising, and and I teach I teach people it uh, the different nuances. Uh, I've got a client here locally that I'm working with, and you know we we literally have created you know 30 ads, 40 ads this week, all within his niche, and you know it all comes down to testing and keeping track of your testing. Your photos make the biggest difference. Yeah. Yeah. I did a Google ads campaign once trying to sell raw land and promote my site. And I spent so much money and I didn't get one sale. It was really disappointing. Really disappointing. Um, do you recommend Google? Uh, you know, I, I don't want to comment cause I don't have enough experience there to, to make a comment on it or not. Okay. I think, I, just, I think it, I think it works. I mean, I had people come to the site. It just didn't convert. Yeah. Um, and it was just expensive. So it could have You need to know what you're doing yeah. for sure. And yeah. you need an expert to kind of guide you through so you don't spend an all the money. And, and that was my, that's my hesitation with Google is that you can run up a lot of money in, in Google AdWords. Whereas Facebook, you can kind of, you, you can control that much, much more. And more specifically, you can get down into a niche market that you cannot get in Google. Right. Now, do you do keyword research with Facebook or are you just focusing on the groups that you want to hit? That well, you my, would, yeah, my yeah. research is within the groups. Who's okay. in the groups? You know, in the variety of groups. And just like you were thinking outside the box of, okay, I have land to sell, but who loves to get land? And you're thinking smart. You're thinking about your customers right. that you've had already and and kind of develop a profile about them. They're men. They're over 40. There a lot of them are military or ex-military preppers. Um, just you know, you can kind of go on and on, and then then you start looking for groups within Facebook that you can hit with those things, and and that's that's a huge piece of the puzzle uh, in in creating your your marketing against them. Fantastic, fantastic. So so I think you know what we should we should create a Facebook program. I have a feeling that's what you were going to say. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's going to add a lot of value because yeah. I don't know how to do it. And I, I'm sure it's not 
brain surgery, but probably to do it really well is difficult, as with anything. And if you could take away that frustration, that's got value, right? Absolutely. Um, if you can be patient and and run your ads, you know what we can do is I can I can show you how I do it. I can show you how I create the ads. You know where to go, what buttons to push. What things to you know when you go to GoDaddy and you go to buy a domain name? Right. I don't need to pick on them, but there's like fifteen thousand different options of upgrades. Right. Right. Domain. No, I don't want that. No, I don't need that. No, I don't need that. So Facebook kind of has a little bit of that going on. There's certain things you don't need to spend money on um, to get a, a result. So you know I've sort of already figured that out, and um, and then to track and be patient and track your click-through rates so that you can figure out what image is the best pulling image. Right. So, you know, we do blind testing, you know, or, you know, double separated uh, testing. And then we do it with the headline and then we do it with our landing pages. Where are we sending them? And then when you finally get that dialed in, then you can scale it up and spend 25 bucks a day. Woohoo! Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, I mean, or, and it's worth it just to build your list. List building is so important now, and this is a really fantastic way to drill down in that niche and build your your list there instead of just blindly going after people with you know within those keywords, right? Yeah, and they may not buy that exact day. They may be interested. They like your offer, but if they can opt into something like on your landing page, um, like in the deli's case, I think I opted into some sort of text marketing. He doesn't email me, but I get a text message every time he's got a special. So he's capturing the data that came from the Facebook page. You know what I mean? I opted into something. So we go to the land geek. I opt in. Now you're building your database. And when you have a special project you want to sell or, or a special announcement or anything, you've got a giant list that you can then go to. Right, right. I mean, you know, the the greatest uh, thing right now, or or the the biggest challenge right now, I should say, is getting people's attention. Yeah. It's it's such a scarce resource for all of us now. We're all getting bombarded, and if you can capture that person's attention, provide them value, build trust through it's an AWeber autoresponder series and then make an offer to them that's going to go so such a, a so much further than just blindly trying to make an offer wouldn't you agree you're going to again stand out you're going to stand out but you're going yeah. you're going to get a, a better customer and a lot more longer term customer and there's not even a customer anymore it's a long term relationship right 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 yeah. so that's kind of how i'm approaching it now because, you know, back when I first started this, it was just, hey, let's just make a sale. Let's just make a sale. Let's just make a sale. And it wasn't about relationships at all. It was about just selling, which uh, was so short-sighted. If I could do it over again, I would have uh, I would have done it completely differently and nurtured these long-term relationships, even if they didn't buy, just having that person in my list so that one day when they were interested in buying, I'd, I'd be able to make that offer to them. Is that? Yeah, yeah, and and you want to you want to go where the eyeballs are. You know, things have changed in the last few years. I've been marketing for twenty years, very aggressively. And when I first started marketing, you know, we were in direct mail, and we were in magazines, and we were in the back of USA Today. Yeah, expensive. I'm not all, on any all, of those all expensive anymore. platforms, by the way. Yeah, yeah. You know, now we're on Facebook. We're on Craigslist. We're you know doing email marketing. We're it's it's all evolving and changing and you've got to keep up, you know, between Craigslist and Facebook. I mean, that's your, those are two huge, huge marketing platforms. Yeah, absolutely. And that's where your customers are. They're out on the computers and they're looking. So Jim, I'm going to put you on the spot as I do everybody. Oh my God. What is the tip of the week? My tip of the week. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you You knew I was going to do this. Okay, and, yeah. so um, and don't you can't take CraigslistMastery.com. That's mine. Oh, uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna give uh, something that I do on my computer 
a tool on my computer that I use, a couple of things, every single day. And if you're not on a Mac, I apologize. There is a way to do it, I'm sure, on a PC. But I'm just going to give you – I showed this to my brother the other day, and he – He's had a Mac for a long. He didn't know this existed. It's just one of those things that somebody just shows you, it'll change your life. <laughs> <laughs> um, not really, but okay. So here's one of the things I do. Minimum five times a day. Today alone, I've already done it like six, seven times. And uh, if you don't know this exists, this is going to open your eyes big time. Okay, it's it's a way of capturing a portion of your screen and putting a picture, you know, putting that photograph on your desktop. On a Mac, it's very simple. The command button, the shift button, and four. All at the same time, command, uh -huh. shift, four. And it brings up, like, crosshairs. And you literally just drag it across part of your screen, wherever it is on your screen, and then let go with your mouse, and it takes a picture of whatever it is you grabbed. I use this all the time on websites when i want to copy a receipt or something you know i make an order a bit purchase i want to grab the receipt boom if if i'm watching a webinar and somebody puts up a, a screen that i i can't write enough notes on or or they 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 make a bunch of bullet points i grab that part copy it on my on my uh, desktop I, I literally have screenshots 5 to 20 times a day that's a great tip. So you don't use Skitch? I love Skitch. I don't know what that is. I just command force shift. <laughs> Skitch is Skitch was bought out by Evernote. It's a screenshot program. And then you can quickly go in and annotate, make arrows, boxes, uh -huh. write on it. It's but then it goes into the Ever your Evernote uh cloud file system. There you go. Oh, um, way more sophisticated. That's yeah, great. yeah. So your yours is is Great. You know, I, I use mine simple. a lot when I'm, when I'm creating uh, images for ads. For example, I'll get up a um, – this is way longer than a tip of the day. I'm sorry. But I'll pull up a, a blank Word document. I'll oh. drag in a photograph. I'll type a bunch of words on it. I'll put a border around it. I'll make it exactly what I want. And then I'll just grab a screenshot of that, of exactly what I want, and boom, I've got my picture that I want. Very cool. Very cool. Well, Jim, thanks for uh, spending time with me today and teaching us all about Craigslist marketing, Facebook marketing. And if you, uh, if you would, go to craigslistmastery.com, check out the program, give us some feedback, and uh, it's going to be affordable for everybody. Uh, and just, just get it. Also, if you want to get some wholesale land, go to frontierpropertiesusa.com and uh give some love out there download for free the passive income blueprint at thelandgeek.com and of course subscribe to the coffee talk video series on youtube which is just youtube.com slash thelandgeek so jim lewis thanks again this is mark podolsky the land geek telling you to work on that marketing <laughs> and uh thanks for uh for listening Jim, Thank thanks you. a lot. All right. Appreciate it. Bye-bye, right. everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.